Hello everyone, it's Video Blog Time. Uh, today I have a set, a set subject. Uh, if you're familiar with the last couple of video blogs I've been doing, kind of just roll through my YouTube to see what videos are thrown out to me. And uh, I'm gonna keep doing that, of course, but uh, I've been averaging about one a week, I think, something like that. I don't mind that, that that's pretty good. Um, but today I have a set subject. Um, it's a little vague. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. If I look kind of awkward, like I'm kind of kind of trying to get low, it's because I am. I don't have my normal chair that I like, so I'm not, like on a higher stool. This this looks better, I think. <laughs> you know, not that you need to see me perfectly, but anyways. Um, so I was hearing the song Thriller the other day, and uh, I don't know. Just the idea popped in my head that. I guess it's because I'm, I'm recording a new album right now, um, about halfway through, uh, maybe a little closer closer to, uh, you know, maybe about 60% done. Uh, but maybe it's because I'm doing that right now, that I was just thinking about the whole songwriting process and how, like, uh, I've always heard that it's, that it's endless. You know, you have a certain amount of notes and sounds and, um, you know, different genres and genres that haven't been created yet, that songs are pretty much uh, something that never really ends. Now, uh, you can argue that in several different uh, uh, discussions. So like, you can talk about like the copyright issue or, you know, like trademark issue on songs uh, or, or just in general, like different sounds, uh, different genres. Uh, I'm talking about more like songs but it kind of interweaves, it kind of weaves with uh, uh, genre too. So uh, I was hearing the song Thriller from Michael Jackson and uh, it just really started making me think like how, and the best way I can describe it using my vocabulary just right now is it's, su it's such like, and, and it's not though, but it just feels so singular to me. Like it feels so, like, it's a song called Thriller with a very, you know, perfect arrangement with, and pretty much all the songs on that album are like that, but let's just focus on Thriller. Like, if you did this something that sounded like, and then, dun, 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 dun. I mean, that melody, mel that melody is so recognizable, I would be surprised if, like, YouTube doesn't pick on that when it comes to their, you know, I'm, I'm just joking, but um, third party notice, you know, but uh, yeah, it, it's just that, like, it's thriller, right? Um, the lyrics, the theme, and you can go, uh, I, you can go further with the video, but let's just stop with the song. Uh, granted, this is a song that has a lot of different influences, you know? from, you know, Michael was a big fan of James Brown, but he kind of went on and did his own thing. At, at this point, you could see that already. Uh, so there are, there are different, several different styles within Michael's sound, but it's a song that's just so, you know, it, it's not a crazy title, it's just Thriller, you know? And now I'll move on from that song because that, my point is that during that period and, and, and earlier, it just seems like a simple idea to like, Okay, what, you're gonna make a song that's gonna be called Yesterday. Uh, you're gonna make a song that's gonna be called Help. It's gonna be called um, Thriller. And, 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 and simple titles. That, now granted, you can make a title whatever you want. You could make a title called Thriller technically today, I think. Um, the titles tend to not be something that like you're gonna get sued for or anything. There's a lot of different versions, a lot of different songs with the same title that are different from each other, you know, that, that that are from different, they're, they're different um, songs completely. But as time goes on, those good ideas get a little bit more, you know, taken. Like most people wouldn't write a song called Thriller because it's like, well, you know, you're not gonna write a better song called Thriller, more than likely. That's, that's not an easy thing. You probably wouldn't make a song called We Are The Champions, you know? Uh, you wouldn't make a song called Bohemian Rhapsody because it's like, why would you do that, right? Even though you, I guess you probably could. I mean, I don't know. That's what that's, that's kind of a gray area. I'm not so sure how that is because it's a, it's such a well known song with kind of a different title. But I think for the most part, you can make titles whatever you want. But 
have we gotten to the point where things are just so like hybrid, hybrids of genres, uh, where we have to be more creative to like make new songs that have that singular feel, you know, like it's a good idea. Uh, personally, I, I do feel like music is somewhat endless, you know, because it just depends on the idea behind it. Like, for example, if, for example, you could be saying like, what? One second, light went away, there you go. You could be saying like, say you're a big fan of metal music, right? And you're like, well, but there, what, what's new in metal that's really catching my attention? Say you're like, okay, there's nothing right now, right? It's just hypothetical, like. Um, then all of a sudden a band comes, comes by, and in my case, uh, in the genre of metal, there, there have been a couple bands over the years that always, you know, will, will stick out above the rest. Uh, you know, I think back when Nightwish, if you're not familiar with Nightwish, check them out. Uh, Nightwish was a, well, is a band, uh, I believe, from Finland. Uh, I think some people call them symphonic metal. Um, their first singer, now they've had three really good singers, but their first singer was just a perfect fit for the band. And she made the song sound bigger. Uh, granted, she didn't write the songs, but I mean, it was a good, it was a good pairing of her and, and the band. Um, it really caught me. It was just so different. She had like these operatic vocals, but not so operatic to the point where there's no, uh, and I'm gonna say it, there's no pop in the metal. You know, the metal had some pop and her vocals were a big part of that. Um, now my point, me being in that, you could be a fan of metal and saying, say, well, who's, who's a new band? It's going to make me feel the way I felt when I first heard, I don't know, Iron Maiden, you know? Granted, it's totally different, but, you know, it's it's special, you know? That's, and, and music is subjective, but I'm just saying what speaks to me. Nightwish did that for me when they had Tarja. They're still good. They're still a great band, but with Tarja, the first singer, it did that for me. It was special. It was different. Their songs felt... And I know that probably doesn't make sense, but that whole singular thing I'm talking about, like they have a song called Wishmaster. That's their song. It's called Wishmaster, and it's a big idea. Okay, there's been other bands, but let's let's go back to a couple of years. Um, Ghost, Ghost through the band, um, that they are not reinventing metal in any way, but they're taking influences that you've never really heard put together in metal to bring out a sound that's very different. Some people would almost say it's not metal. I've seen that, but I, I, I think it is. Um, that That's really picking at, you know, details, but uh, I, I believe they're a perfectly fine metal band and I've seen them live and they play really good. Like it's really different and it's, you know, it, it takes guts to do what, what he's doing. I'm not saying, I mean, on a few different, on a few different levels. Uh, you probably won't catch me too much with their member with their uh, merchandise because of the things they talk about. And granted, I've worn Iron Maiden shirts in the past, but it's a little bit more uh, precisely uh, in what what it is they believe in than Maiden. Maiden tends to be a little bit more vague with beliefs, but it's a you know it's obviously a big uh, crazy image of a monster or a zombie, whatever form Eddie takes. But with Ghost, obviously, it's a little bit more like, okay, this is what it is. And you won't see me with the merch for that reason. But in, in appreciating their level of, of, of songwriting and performanceship, I, well, I can do that. I can say I've seen them and say they do what they do very well. And they've given themselves opportunities to write songs with, with big ideas, like I'm saying. So going back to, I mean, and, and this can happen in punk music, it can happen in any genre. So I guess the answer here is music is, it, and I say somewhat, because over the years, doesn't it feel like the more music there is, the, the more it's just a little bit more saturated, and a little harder to, you gotta be a little more creative, but who's to say that that wasn't the way it was maybe at certain points in the classical world, right? Like, after a certain point, things get saturated. Maybe it's not because music has been around since, I guess, we've been around. And it's always changing forms. And it's, a, it's only been a... I know it's been a business for a, probably a very long time. But in the modern music business, the modern music industry, it's not that that old. Um, and people almost... almost ever, I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Almost every... <laughs> it's getting me. 
almost everything we've ever heard uh, in music that we're into uh, that's that's been in the, in the last like I uh, you know 60 70 years like has come through record labels and uh, the business that we know today right that, that I always talk about that I'm not a part of I'm a DIY artist but these songs all reside there they all have been made and released under these brands and music is free music is something anyone can do and great songs can come from anyone at any at any time um but it's endless you know i i think for the most part it is but it takes a lot of creativity to creativity to put your stamp and say okay i've spent a lot of time a lot of time creating who i am in music so that i can make this simple song uh because i can't call a song uh you know uh milk you know i can or i can i, I can call a song uh i'm sorry i don't even know a song called milk uh, but, but uh in other words a very simple one word um i'm thinking now like i don't think i know a song called that anyways um but I'm sure if you search it, there will be one. There, almost everything's been done. You gotta think really hard outside the box to create new sounds. And new sounds are always being invented, but you know, drums, bass, guitar, uh, uh, keyboard, synth. I mean, that's gonna, those co different combinations of all that, it's, it's gonna be around for a long time. And they're try, try to find, trying to find new ways to do it, to make songs that are as special as, uh, you know, Jumping Jack Flash from Rolling Stones it's not easy and it's very difficult and it, it sometimes can feel like it's not endless uh, but I think it is it's just the creativity that has to go into it to make it feel effortless you know and that is one of the reasons why I, I, I go through different drafts on lyrics because I, I'll do the first draft every now and then I'll nail it on the first draft but it's very rare I'll go through it and say okay this word can be better and then this word can be better I tried my lyrics. I tried to have a combination of um, poet poetry, but where the meaning of the song is not so dug within the poetry that you have no, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes that's the case with my songs, but I try for it not to be. I try to do a combination of poetry and being you know to the point, and you can kind of figure out what I'm talking about within the poetry. That's the kind of style of lyrics that I I like to do. Certain words I like to use a lot. It, it, that, that's fine. It creates my world, um, and I try to mix that up somewhat. Uh, so yeah, that, that's how I do it. And hopefully, I have songs at this point that can be seen as my songs that are special, that uh, that are singular. Like I've been saying, uh, they live on their own. They're they're a song. Uh, it's getting tougher. Uh, you're, that's why you're seeing different bands always try, and artists trying to create new sounds because that seems to be the way to start fresh when it comes to music. Like, how hard would it be to write a song in the style of like an ACDC style of, of, of rock and roll? Uh, you, and you see bands that are influenced by them that sound a lot like them that try to write similar songs to them. It almost sounds like they use the same kind of lyrics as ACDC. But how hard would it be to write better songs than what ACDC did early on? Right? They're probably not because they did that and they pretty much conquered that style. You know, I do ACDC better than ACDC, you know, during that uh, mid to late 70s, early 80s, you know. Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction, lots of bands are, are influenced by that and doing it better than Appetite's going to be very, very tough, you know. Probably probably not going to happen in that style. Now, granted, when you change things just just a little bit that's what the, that's the beauty of being influenced by different people you can be influenced by gnr and acdc and metallica and maybe even newer bands of n sevenfold and motorhead well, they're not newer i'm sorry um you know dio all these older bands um and mix that with the newer stuff like um, ghost like um you name it you know there's a lot of them um hailstorm and and that can create your overall sound uh now, granted, sometimes you want to get out of that genre because I was kind of all in that hard rock area there. But if you mix in a little bit of like, I don't know, Simon and Garfunkel, a little bit of uh, Beatle, Beatles, a little bit of maybe some Mozart, and voila, you have a new style of music, right? Like that, it's not that easy, but in other words, that's kind of how it works, you know? I'm extremely influenced by uh, Motown uh, and, uh, you know, R&B and, and, and rap. 
and you know, uh, I guess uh, let's say maybe more more precise, uh, er early rap, you know, like uh, like uh, Public Enemy or something, you know, you're influenced by all that, and then you throw in, but you know what, I'm also influenced by, um, you know, Merle Haggard and, and and Willie Nelson. What happens? You you become this little bit of a hybrid, right? And that and whatever you write, and you you know, try your best to keep on getting better. I think that's how singular songs that can live on their own and be themes that seem effortless. That's how they're made. So I guess I'm answering my own questions here. Uh, it's, music is endless when you see it that way. Uh, and it just can sometimes feel like that. Like it's just, I guess, I guess, because I'm writing, it can feel like that. And it makes you appreciate those songs that are just so strong, you know, and simple. And it wasn't always like that, you know? And it's probably gone in waves over the years, over the centuries. Um, or music maybe is this big drawn out like opera where it's like an hour to three hours and then you know now there's pop songs you know and whenever pop songs started coming out and three minutes two minutes four minutes and now we're starting to see a lot more uh, experimentation and oh, i mean that's always been like that you know in the if you look for it you'll find it so um i mean it's just pretty much it, I, I see why it's objective and i see why music should always have lots of variety you know, obviously the mainstream isn't really doing that. You're seeing certain kinds of music and uh, that kind of changes gradually over the years. You'll notice sounds or like for a while in, in the top, uh, I don't know, I guess 200 on iTunes, like maybe three years ago, you were seeing like a lot of saxophone. Right. And then, you know, I'm trying to think of that. That was an Ariana Grady song. There was another one that uh, was from... Uh, the thrift store song, huh? That, that I bought a broken keyboard. Uh, the, who the Macklemore that had a, a saxophone. Uh, I believe there was a song from what's his name, Jason Derulo. I believe had a saxophone that same year. It was a lot. There was a lot of songs that had the saxophone during that year. Um, and then a couple years later, it all became about. I don't even know what sound this is, but the sound that that uh, in Justin Bieber song. There's a little sound, like a little, kind of a little flute kind of sound in, in the chorus. I mean, within the, in between the chorus. And then there was a song, I think Rihanna did that. There was a lot of songs within that period that had that real little high kind of auto-tuned uh, little sound that, that was kind of in a lot of songs. Now it's, um, we're coming out of that and... Now I'm hearing a lot of, uh, I can't even tell you at this point, it's kind of, we're finding the new stuff, you know. I'm not someone that follows so closely that I know exactly what's what's coming. I know what's in front of me, but people get very crazy about this, about what's next, you know, with technology to where, because what you want is that if you're watching the, the song, like what I'm saying, if you're watching the, the top songs and you're studying them to say, well, I want to put this in my song, I wouldn't go by the top 200 because, uh, no, if you just want to learn how to song, to write songs, then that's fine. But uh, because there is a certain line that tends to always exist within top songs and big songs, you know, past and present um, and future. Um, and that is, you know, you can learn that with any, any era top songs. But when you're trying to find sounds to throw in your songs, I, would, I think it's bad to go to, 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 to the current chart because music, unless you're doing it like in a do-it-yourself do way where you can literally release it overnight or something, uh, and it's still like a big thing for the most part. By the time you record it, by the time you release it, it's over, you know? And what you want to do is, if you want to do that, you got to have to find out what producers are doing, uh, somehow, however, however that may be, find out what they're doing because maybe don't find, don't find out through what's out now. Find out through what's going to be out in, you know, six months and then do that, you know? That's kind of what I've heard people tell me uh, and how I, common sense, I guess. Uh, nevertheless, you, you can learn how to write songs in, in, in the pop world by, by, by looking around. It's, it's not that much. It doesn't change that much. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned with songwriting is that as much as you want to learn, you know, all the different, you, you know, I'm not, a, I don't have a crazy encyclopedia knowledge of chords. You know, this is just a normal uh, what, E minor. You know, obviously you can, you know, you can take fingers off here and there and create different minor chords, different, uh, different chords in general. That's just a major, but you can add, you know, sevens and you name it. I mean, 
it's a, there's a lot you can do. But my point is that uh, you can you know you can add all the key changes you want. But what happens a lot is you start wanting to make special arrangements, and there needs to be like to me a um, little bit of a you need to figure out how to be simple while also being complicated. Yeah, that's probably the simplest way I can put it, because nobody really wants to hear pop music and pop, don't get me wrong. When I, I mean, I'm sorry, don't, it's not don't get me wrong. It's um, pop can live in any genre. Pop can live in metal. Pop can live in punk. Pop can live in country. It, it, it's that. It's that to me the simplicity. And I know pop stands for popular, but in terms of it just being kind of like your um, simple chord structure, that's kind of what I think of when I think of pop. Your simple like chords kind of going back and forth. Uh, there's, there's several ways to do it, of course, but um, you could just say pop is popular, but I don't, I don't know. I, th I, think it, I think it is a genre now somewhat, uh, So and there's several different kinds of genres of pop, uh, but it can be interjected into all different kinds of music. You can hear Ghost and think, oh, Ghost is kind of like a poppy metal band, right? Uh, you can hear like Green Day and say, well, Green Day is like a poppy punk band. Uh, I, was like, I think you get my point. Or you can hear like uh, Shania Twain and say, well, she's kind of like a poppy country artist, right? That's kind of my point. If, when you want to learn how to get better at that kind of music, you know, you can use all the, all the crazy chords you want. There's, there's a lot you can use within the song. But the knowledge of doing that, you need to really think about it because if you want to write those kinds of songs, it, it's complication, com being complicated is not the way to go. Like that's not, that's not the point. The point is to let the song write itself and and, and try and that's a tricky thing because you want to throw in these chords because you know them and you're like well i want to make them useful but if you the more you start forcing them in there the, the harder it is for a person to like and the thing about pop music is you should probably like it within two to three listens i think so if it's a really good one you'll get it right away but i'm not subjected to that being the only way to write a song i think some songs work really well when you get, you get to like them over two to five listens uh, I think that's some, maybe even seven. And then it can become really special to you when you unlock uh, what the song is giving you. That's a lost art nowadays. You don't see a lot of people. It's the, uh, that's the beauty of the album, I think. There, there's always songs that you like more later on because you figure them out. You know, they hit you differently later. But it, it, that, that doesn't necessarily mean they're complicated. It just means that the person kind of had a sound and a song that was, was something you're not too used to. So it took you a while to get it. Uh, you know, you do a simple chord structure like you know, D to A to B minor to G. I mean, that's countless, countless, countless songs. If you see these, these people on the internet, guy plays a hundred hits, you know, whatever, uh, with the same chord structure, it's that sort of thing. But it's hard. It's hard to come up with lyrics and themes that are gonna make it singular, live on its own, and to make a song like that. Um, it can be very, can be very difficult. As long as you hold yourself to a standard and say, well, I, I, I want this to be good. And by looking around and seeing different artists, you can figure out how they do it. And sometimes you'll run into songs that just unbelievably are that easy. Uh, I, and it falls into the, what I'm talking about with being complicated. Like say you do a D, like I just said, A to G, right? You'd be surprised there are songs that literally, literally are that. And with a, with a great idea of lyrics and a nice flowing melody, and it works, you know, at the right time. Uh, nevertheless, if you have the knowledge to throw in some something smarter, of course, being smarter doesn't always mean a uh, little crazy chords. Sometimes you can do like what Edge does from U2 and people that are influenced by the Edge because he's influenced like a ton of guitar players. So if you're not familiar with U2, he's the kind of guitar player that plays within the chord a lot. For example, if he's doing like a D, he'll, he'll bring it over here, right? And he may break it down to not the whole thing. He may break it down to just these two notes. And if it moves to A, you know, do the same thing here. He may, he may break it down to these notes right here, you know? And you can play around with that. You know, and it's, it's, it's pretty much endless what you can do when you're playing like that. And anyways, I mean, I know that's just, I'm just playing whatever comes to my mind, uh, but um, not always chords, not always 
breaking the, uh, the, the notes down. Sometimes it's also the combination of the instruments that make a song um, work. You know, say you're playing like a D, and you, you do what I was telling you there. To A, to A right? So D to A. Well, do you want to make you want to make the bass go? You may, if you have a really good melody that works with that, but you may also want to go. It's you can change it around. You know, the bass doesn't have to just go. And the drums can the drums go or they go or you may want a combination of that throughout the song depending on how you produce it all these things work to make um, a song more special and never never overthink a song go with what you feel record that and then go from there you know if you don't like something you can change something uh, I have found that the most important thing is to, as a, for a writer, I think, is to do what you're doing, do it the best you can do, and then forget about it. Release it, you know, release it. Uh, I think that it, that's very important. It's, it's important for anybody. It's important for an artist, like a literal artist that draws and paints. You, have, you can't just sit on something for so long where it's just like it becomes problematic. You know, you got to at some point just swallow it and say this is what I'm working on and if I want to go on and be an artist I have to release something at some point and that'll make you better it'll make you better to work within a time frame and uh, obviously when you see these big bands sometimes it's it's not good to go by them because they're so rich at that point that they're these legendary artists and like yeah of course they're gonna take five years or four years within albums they have a lot to live up to and sometimes they just don't they just don't want to you know so it's slow uh, but do what feels right, you know. Uh, I think working on a song, writing the lyrics, going to a couple drafts before you get to the recording is fine. Then go to the recording, be solid about it, perform it as good as you can. Uh, but once you get to that point where you're going crazy, you're, you've worked on for it, worked on it a little too long, I think. Uh, and, and, uh, granted, you can go crazy any day if you if you if you work on something for too long. <laughs> so keep you know keep it to a minimum every day as well, like maybe two three hours of the same song or something you know and that's that's quite a long time as it is uh, studio time six hours at the most i think some, somewhere around there um depending you know on the situation but anyway so I'm, I'm getting off topic but uh there's so many ways to write a song to make it to make it special to make it there's always new ideas and i think that the thing is like you want to give a song an idea like i i've told i mean look i have a lot of songs on this new album that I'm really that I'm releasing uh, in about a month. Um, I'm going to cross over the hundred song mark, where I'm going to have a hundred songs as a solo artist, um, about 105 or 106 to be exact, or something something like that, right right around there. But it's over 100. Um, I've definitely gone to the period where I'm just writing, 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 writing. All the songs mean something, but I'm writing for the sake of writing, right? Uh, especially between like 09, probably all the way to like 2000. 12. A little after that, I started maybe slowing it down just a little bit for the sake of, well, I got a lot of songs, and I mean, I want, the, I want them to mean something, complete, not just not just song-wise, but to me. So, um, yeah, it's one thing to write, like, some song that's about this or this story, and it's a story, and, you, you know, you release it, and then, you know, it means something to someone else and to you, but just not, like, deeply, you know? I, I really want these songs, the songs I write now, to be deep to the point where they mean a lot to me, you know? Deep. So when you write something, you write a song, you want it to, you want there to be a reason for it. And I, I know I've mentioned this on video blogs, but I think that's very important to have a song mean something to not just as a song, but like to you as a person. And there needs to be a reason why I'm going into the studio. There needs to be a reason why I'm making these songs. Uh, I think in the beginning, not so much. This is something that's more for once you've been writing for a while, I think. And you need, the, you need a reason to get back in that studio to make songs. Uh, and that's been going on for me for quite some time, maybe about, maybe around since 2013, 14. Um, but like with this new album, I, I, I got the meaning and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sharing that soon. Uh, but that's to me how you make it endless. 
because once you've written a lot of songs, it becomes like, it feels like it is that they're at the top, you know? I can't just get on the piano and say, oh, let me write the song, let me write the song, let me write the song. Maybe if I was writing for different artists, you know, and then I could be like, well, this person would need this and this person needs that and the ideas would come. But in terms of like my, for myself, if I don't have that idea and that purpose, I probably couldn't write a song anymore. <laughs> so that's how I do it now. And that's how I think it's done, you know? That's how I, I really do believe it's done. And, and that's, also, that's how music is endless. I said that quite a bit already, so I think that's that's enough for uh, for this one. Uh, it just it just goes. I just I I heard Thriller and I thought about that, you know, how music's amazing like that, you know. Anyways, it's amazing what can come out just a of just I don't know. You look at the piano and it's just a couple. You know, once you go through a couple notes, the octaves repeat, and then there then there's rhythm. Rhythm is like. There's a certain kind. There are certain kinds of rhythm that live within the kind of music that I write, and you can always interject new sounds and new uh, ideas. But you know, for the most part, the kind of the kind kind of music that I make uh, will always have a certain style to it. A certain, uh, and that's because I change around quite a bit. But there's always a certain feel to my songs that lives within whatever genre. I mean, whatever sound I'm I'm trying to go after. Uh, so. Even with that limited uh, canvas and uh, paint choices, I think it's I think it's still endless, and that's that's the real beauty of it, man. Uh, and it's so important. It's it's uh, I want to say music is not something we want in our lives. It's something I guess we really do need. So I just started thinking about that when I heard that song. Lots of really good songs, really strong songs that have been made over the years, and there's going to be many more to come. Uh, Within the industry, I think we're getting to the point where some of these strong songs are going to be coming from artists um, outside of the industry. Artists like myself, artists that you run into in your hometown. Uh, that, and, that, and that's the thing. Music is so, like, it's not, there's a lot of perception that, that goes along with music. It, you know, you'd be surprised what you can get yourself to like, like, if it's like a family member that made the song and you, you really want to support this person, you listen to the song, you know, 10 times and all of a sudden you realize you really like it right uh it's no different making music for record labels ma making music at the DIY hours it's it's not any different in a musical sense it's the same thing it's just the fact that uh, music at the top level in the industry is really for a lot of money beautiful music videos big sound and it, it, for an artist it's smaller to get that sort of like hey look here i'm on the table here check me out it takes a lot of creativity and a lot of will power and yeah just not giving up and i'm on that train right now lots of other artists are on that train um i think <laughs> uh whether how long they're on it i don't know i've been on it for quite a while i'm not getting off anytime soon um it's what's what i know and i always want to learn more and and, and make new music and uh, that's what i'm doing right now looking forward to it I, I really am actually i got the title of the album and the song titles and the lyrics are pretty much there so it's gonna i'm starting to record pretty soon if you want to follow my journey uh in a making the album sort of thing go to my instagram and on the igtv uh icon on my profile i'm doing a making of an out making of the album I, the first three videos i've done have just been me talking like this but uh the next one and all the way till the end is going to be a little bit more uh, performance uh, involved you know you're gonna see me on the drums and the bass and the guitar and it should get pretty fun uh, if you don't want to do that just just wait it out when the album comes out and that making of the album is done I'm going to put all the videos together and I'm gonna throw it here on my YouTube channel like the whole thing so you, you can wait for that if you want to uh, but or, or you can see it in real time uh, now on Instagram separately all right that's pretty good I think I think uh, I talked a lot <laughs> Till next time, rock on.